I talked to their leadership team yesterday, talked to Gwen. They feel very comfortable on Starship. They feel like they're on page for the lander. Um, on track, so they, they feel very good. They NASA's acting good. admin, Sean Duffy, just crushed all doubts about SpaceX's Starship HLS progress. Yes, this is unexpected. After recent setbacks with Starship, NASA's new acting admin didn't waste time. He went straight to SpaceX COO Gwyn Shotwell to get the real scoop on HLS, the key to sending humans back to the moon on Artemis III. Surprisingly, what he heard instantly flipped his view on SpaceX's pace and made him confident HLS will hit the mark, dealing a serious blow to China's lunar dreams. So, what exactly did Gwyn say? Why could this spell serious trouble for China's lunar plans? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. The appointment of Transportation Secretary Sean Duffy as NASA's acting administrator has sparked a lot of supporters and critics. It's understandable since with his political background and previous roles, many see him as lacking the deep technical and space science expertise NASA demands. But leadership isn't just about expertise. It's also about management skills and the ability to motivate teams so everyone feels valued and ready to work together. Even before officially taking the job, Duffy has been pushing hard on the Artemis program, NASA's plan to send astronauts back to the moon and eventually Mars. Recently, he fired up the space race again by saying, America must dominate space and our critical moon mission. Artemis must be as known and supported by America just as Apollo was. It's a race to the moon. Duffy reinforced his support for Artemis on a TV show, highlighting its three phases. Returning to the moon, establishing lunar bases or outposts, and manned missions to Mars. With strong public approval for Artemis, Duffy seems to be following a solid political strategy. The key now is delivering on his plans on schedule. Luckily, Artemis II, the crewed mission orbiting the moon, is set for early 2026, a crucial chance to prove he's the right person for the job. On the flip side, science journalist Robert Zimmerman criticized Duffy for confidently stating on TV that Artemis III, the next lunar landing, could still happen in 2027. Given the current problems with SpaceX's Starship, many doubt that timeline is realistic. To prove his critics wrong, Duffy quickly set up a private meeting with the SpaceX HLS team, including CEO Gwyn Shotwell, to verify whether SpaceX's progress was truly on track. It was a tough moment for both SpaceX and NASA, with Elon Musk's company facing setbacks from Flight 7 through Flight 9, and NASA dealing with budget cuts and major staffing losses. Luckily, what Duffy saw firsthand convinced him that the $4.04 billion NASA invested in SpaceX's HLS project was totally worth it. Speaking happily to the press when asked about concerns over recent Starship issues, Sean Duffy said, I talked with the leadership team yesterday, and they seem very confident about Starship. If you're on the same page about the lander being on track, they feel really good. They said that if there's any holdup for Artemis III, it's not going to be because of them. Sure, if this came from Elon Musk, it might sound overly optimistic, but when it comes from Gwyn, it's usually spot on. With that level of confidence, we're now in a better position to see how they'll make landing humans on the moon again, more than five decades after Apollo 17, a reality by 2027. Honestly, just saying that gives me chills because it's the moment I've been waiting for. So, is SpaceX really on track like they say? First, let's look at what SpaceX is doing to gear up for rapid progress. They're currently working on flights 10 and 11, the last two for Starship Block 2. Every bit of data from these will be super valuable for improving the Starship HLS version. Alongside new pairs of boosters and Block 3 ships, we can expect at least three more test flights before the year ends. If those succeed, SpaceX will have a solid foundation to ramp up launches in 2026, running three launch pads simultaneously two at Starbase, and one in Florida. Plus, ULA's SLC-37 is being cleared for SpaceX to build another Starship launch pad, likely finished by late 2026 or early 2027. It'll be built to HLS standards, conveniently near Kennedy Space Center for easier launches and mission support. Right now, SpaceX just needs one successful orbital test flight with Starship Block 3, possibly by mid-2026. Then they could move on to an uncrewed test landing in the second half of 2026 before starting real missions, a crucial step toward delivering cargo and eventually astronauts to the moon. 
Backing up the timeline, on April 30th last year, NASA tested the Axiom Extravehicular Mobility Unit spacesuit for the first time with a full-scale Starship HLS mock-up. The results were very promising, providing valuable feedback on the cabin space, deck, and elevator, ensuring astronauts have enough room to move comfortably. By early 2025, this module appeared inside Star Factory at Starbase, showing assembly is well underway. If all goes as planned, we could see a complete Starship HLS version as soon as next year. This upcoming model stands tall at about 55 meters while keeping the same 9 meter diameter. That extra height not only boosts fuel capacity, but also creates more room for the crew module. Thanks to this design, Starship HLS can stay in lunar orbit for up to 100 days, giving it the flexibility to sync up with Orion or the Gateway Station, Station, especially if there are mission delays. Next, compared to the regular Starship, the HLS packs in five large solar arrays, each about 18 meters long. These provide stable power for navigation, communication, thermal control, and even the elevator system. Arranged around the hull, the panels can extend and tilt to soak up sunlight efficiently, whether orbiting the moon or on its surface. They deliver tens of kilowatts of power, tough enough to withstand harsh solar radiation and space dust, making the ship more independent and easing the load on backup batteries. Speaking of design changes, Starship HLS ditches the control flaps and heat-resistant ceramic tiles, swapping them for a reflective white paint. Since it won't be re-entering Earth's atmosphere, those heavy flaps and tiles aren't needed, cutting weight. The white paint reflects sunlight, keeping fuel tanks colder and reducing boil-off of liquid oxygen and methane during long missions. It's physics in action. Lighter colors absorb less heat, which is crucial in space. For maneuvering, HLS relies on reaction control thrusters combined with dedicated landing engines to stabilize and guide itself in lunar orbit and during moon landings. Now, onto the crew experience. The number of windows jumps from 4 to 10, giving astronauts a wider view during critical phases like landing, surface activities, and takeoff. These pressure-resistant windows also protect against radiation and micrometeoroids, and are strategically placed around the crew cabin for maximum visibility. To improve landing precision and safety, the number of landing engines, or hot gas thrusters, increases from 12 to 18. These smaller thrusters provide better control, offer redundancy in case of failures, and reduce the dusty blast that could damage equipment. They have already been tested on the ground and are fine-tuned for delicate maneuvers. Finally, the biggest upgrade, Starship HLS includes an elevator running down its 55-meter height from the crew module at the nose to the lunar surface. This elevator safely transports astronauts in bulky spacesuits and heavy equipment like rovers or samples. It's a mechanical marvel built to endure the moon's harsh environment, powered by solar arrays or backup batteries. As you might remember, SpaceX successfully tested this elevator using Axiom Space's spacesuits, proving it works smoothly. When a groundbreaking vehicle like SpaceX's Starship HLS is launched, it will mark the end of China's ambitions on the moon, let alone Mars. We all know how much the moon means to China, not just economically, but because the space race represents a nation's overall progress in science, technology, and history. China aims to surpass the U.S. and become the world's leading power. Their lunar exploration program began in 2004 with a three-phase plan, orbit, land, and return. They've reached significant milestones, including returning lunar samples to Earth with Chang'e 5 in 2020 and sharing those samples with several countries. However, the U.S. is excluded due to the Wolf Amendment, which prohibits NASA from directly collaborating with China over security concerns. Despite knowing this restriction, China publicly claims to share samples with the U.S., a gesture that may conceal other motives. Ultimately, their goal is to land astronauts on the moon before 2030 using the Lan Yu lander launched by the Long March 10 rocket. And from what I know, they're serious about this. Just yesterday, a Chinese rocket news site reported that Long March 10 is gearing up for its second static fire test. The first test happened back in June last year, and footage showed its engines roaring with power, rivaling SpaceX's Super Heavy booster. But honestly, their technology still has a long way to go compared to SpaceX. SpaceX's Super Heavy Block 3 clearly outshines China's Long March 10 in many ways, showing just how serious SpaceX is about leading the space race. Standing 71 meters tall, 
packing 33 powerful Raptor 3 engines and boasting a massive thrust of 7,590 tons, Super Heavy Block 3 can lift way heavier loads, roughly 150 tons to low Earth orbit and 100 tons to lunar orbit, dwarfing Long March 10s, 70 and 27 tons respectively. What really sets Super Heavy apart is its full reusability, with that crazy Mechazilla catch tower that grabs the booster mid-air, making it both cost-effective and technically advanced, way beyond Long March 10A's partial reuse. Running on advanced methane and liquid oxygen fuel, and designed specifically for Moon and Mars missions, Super Heavy Block 3 isn't just stronger. It represents a bold vision that could shape the future of spaceflight worldwide. Meanwhile, Long March 10, though impressive with its goal to beat the U.S. to the moon, still sticks to a more traditional design and lags behind in scale compared to SpaceX's masterpiece. So, we just talk about the booster part. What about the actual lunar lander? On August 7th, China conducted its first full-scale test of the lander they hope will carry their first astronauts to the moon before 2030, according to the country's manned space program. The lander's ascent and descent system was put through a rigorous trial at a testing site in Hebei province, specially designed to mimic the moon's surface. The test ground featured a special coating to replicate the moon's reflectivity, complete with rocks and crater-like formations. China manned space called the test a major milestone, highlighting its complexity, long duration, and range of operating conditions. In a statement released Thursday, CMS emphasized how crucial this was for advancing China's crude lunar exploration ambitions. The lander, named Lan Yu, meaning Embracing the Moon in Mandarin, weighs around 26,000 kilograms and is powered by four main engines, each delivering 7,500 newtons of thrust, along with multiple attitude control thrusters for precise maneuvering. It runs on solar panels and even carries a 200-kilogram lunar rover capable of traveling up to 10 kilometers. More than just a transport vehicle, Lanyu acts as a shelter, data center, and power source for astronauts during surface missions lasting about six hours. But when placed side by side with SpaceX's Starship HLS and its bold vision to build a sustainable moon base alpha, China's Lanyu lander pales in both scale and ambition.